Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. I hope you're having a good weekend. Um, now, we're going to take a look today at one of the classic variants on Sudoku uh, that we've never covered on the channel before. This is called a Thermo Sudoku. Um, and the puzzling question comes from the 2018 UK Sudoku Championship. Now, this means that it was uh, compiled by Tom Collier, who is one of the very best solvers in the UK, multiple time winner of the UK Sudoku Championship and a very very fine setter as well and how do thermo Sudokus work? Well very similar to normal Sudokus except obviously you can see these thermometer shapes in the grid now in some of these puzzles these are bent but Tom's designed this one and it's very very elegant you can see the symmetry among the thermometers and very very few given digits and the simple rule is that when we move along the thermometer from its base, so this is the bulb is the base where the mercury would be, um, as you go up the thermometer you must increase in numbers. So you know if we look at this thermometer for example in the central column, um, you know we'd have to have smaller numbers at the top here, bigger numbers at the bottom, and that applies to all of the thermometers. It doesn't have to be um, incremental, so it's not necessary for a, you know it to go two, three, four, five six, seven, eight in strict order, but it does have to strictly increase. So it could be, you know, two, four, six, eight, you know, if there was enough room along the thermometer. Um, so we're going to have a look at this puzzle in a minute. I'm going to talk about some of the ways I think about solving it. Do have a go at the puzzle. If you have time to do that before you watch me solve it, definitely recommend that you do so. I think um, that's one of the best ways to do it. And one of the things I'm quite excited to mention today is that very soon, we hope to be giving you guys the opportunity to solve online these puzzles. So we're going to be including uh, links to either a website that we're going to create or uh, web pages that we'll create where you guys can have a go at the puzzles that we're solving on the channel. And that's going to make it easier for you to, to either solve along with us or solve first in an electronic form and then review our videos to see how to how to do it. So if that sounds interesting, do keep an eye on the channel. That is coming soon. Um, anyone who hasn't subscribed, please do so. We really appreciate it. And anyone who might be in a position to sponsor us on Patreon, that would be most welcome. Um, it really makes a difference to um, to us um, when people uh, do become patrons. It's a couple of dollars a month, and you get you get a puzzle that we design each month for that. And for $3 a month, you get a video on how to solve it. So there is a bit of extra content for, for patrons on Patreon. Now, without further ado, I'm now going to look at this puzzle. Um, so you can see there's very few given digits at all. And in fact, only two digits are repeated. So there's these two threes and these two sevens. So maybe we'll start with the sevens because they're interacting on this, this grid, aren't they? And in fact, yes. So if we look at where a seven can go, a seven can go in either of these two positions. But we have to be a bit careful here because of this thermometer. So if we put a seven in this, in this cell here, this could be a six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the best we could do. And obviously that's going to lead to a repeated one in column five. So this one is not a seven. It gives us a digit. And Ah, okay. And now, as usual with Puzzles by Tom, these are very cleverly designed puzzles. There's going to be quite a linear solution path, I would I would expect, and we're going to have to find it. So these two sevens that we have now, what are they telling us about this central block? Now, ordinarily, we'd be able to pencil mark three sevens down this block, but this, this thermometer is very restricting. If we try and put a seven here, for example, what's that going to mean? Well, that means that we'd have to go eight... 9, 10, 11. We can't have 10s and 11s in Sudoku. So in fact, the 7, I think, can only go here. That leaves just enough room for two more digits, which are going to have to be 8 and 9, like this. Um, and what can we do with that, if anything? So we still need to place two... For, ah, we have a 6 here. So the 6 must be locked into one of these two cells like that and okay this is a two or a four but we've got very few twos and fours in the grid now 
I'm now going to talk about one of the tips I use because it's just helped me here. Um, when we're looking at Thermo Sudoku, it's very important to compare and contrast the bulb ends of the Sudoku. And in the bulb ends of the Sudoku, so these cells here, it's very important to focus on small numbers. How are the small numbers restricting what can go in the bulb ends? And the corollary of that is if we look at the other ends, we know these are the higher, you know, these are going to be relatively high numbers. So we have to think about how these are restricted. Now look, this is very cunning design. We have a seven, eight, and a nine all here appearing in column seven. So the maximum that we could make this digit here would be a six. Same with this cell. Absolute maximum is going to be a six. Now if we make this a six, we could go five, four, three, two. That's just possible. But if we did that, this could only be a five. This would have to be five, and this would have to be five, four, three, two, one. So I don't know if you can see it, but in fact, these two thermometers here are going to be a five, six pair. It's never possible for us to put a four into either of these, this cell or this cell. If we try, let's try it. Four, three, two, one. Up. Oh, we're going to have to put a zero there. So actually, there is a five, six pair made up of the ends of these two uh, thermometers. And look, that's going to resolve. We can't have a six here anymore. So we're going to be able to put a six in there and then have two, four pair like this, which means there must be a one, three pair in the edges, this cell and this cell. Now you'll notice that I am not using Snyder notation today, so I am not um, highlighting in three by three blocks where a number can only go in two positions. Sometimes I do that with these puzzles, but actually pairs, you know, highlighting um, cells that can only contain two digits, I find to be a very useful form of notation for this particular Sudoku variant. Now, um, right, okay, well now let's think about, we've done something with this five and the six, but there is there is a similar logic that applies to the other end, isn't there? Because we know if this is a five, for example, this will have to be a one, and then the only thing this could be would be a two, and this would be a six. So there's actually a one, two pair at the other end of these. Um, the other end of these thermometers like this. Now, okay, and now let's think about this nine. What is this nine telling us? Now it's telling us something very important about this three by three block. So where can the 9 go in this 3x3 three three block? It obviously can't go in any of these three positions. And it can't go in this thermometer, because we know that that thermometer caps out. If we put a 9 in anywhere along here, this, this cell would have to be greater than a 9, and it can never be. Let's go the same along here. We can't put a 9 anywhere along the midpoint of a thermometer. So it must, in fact, go there. That is a 9. And that means there's a 9 in one of these two cells like that. Now is that useful? Um, don't know, don't know yet, but we can do a similar thing with this 7 I think. Can we? Well, we can't. it's not quite as good, but let's think about where a 7 can go over here. So obviously we can't have a 7 down this thermometer because we know it caps out at 6. Can't have a 7 here. Can't have a 7 here because of this 7. So there is a 7 in one of these two positions. Now if this was the 7, this would this thermometer would go 8 here, 9 here. Now that's not possible. There's an already a 9 in row 6. So this 7 is not possible. This is a 7. And therefore this is an 8. So that's the only thing. It can't be a 9. And now, hmm, what can we do with that? Well, actually, by simple Sudoku rules, we have a 7 here and a 7 here and this 7. So this must be a 7. We can't put a 7 here in this 3x3 three three block because obviously we can only have one digit between the eight and the nine, uh, between the 7 and the 9. We need 2. So that's a 7. 
7, 7. You can never have a 7 along this thermometer. So we know that there must be a 7 in this cell, which means this is an 8. And think, how many more 7s have we got to place? Well, actually, this has to be a 7 by straightforward Sudoku. And are we done with 7s now? 8, 9, I think we are. Um, I think we are. Okay, so that's, that is helpful. Perhaps. Um, this cell is quite restricted, isn't it? Because the contents of this column and the contents of this row. So this can be a 2. Oh, it can be a 5 as well. I was hoping that would be a sort of naked single sitting there, but it's not. Um, and this cell, obviously, that can be a 2 or a 3, etc., along the thermometer. So, right, okay, so we, that's probably not where we need to look next. Six is ah six here six here now there needs to be a six therefore in one of these two squares well it can't be higher because then so it must be next to the seven um, nine nine ah where can the nine go in this three by three block again we can't have a nine anywhere along the midpoint of a thermometer we have a nine here so there's a nine either in that square or that square. That's that's lovely. Now look at this. So now let's think about how this 9 affects this block. We can't have a 9 in any low point on a thermometer. We can't have a 9 here. So the 9 is locked into one of those two positions. Which means this 9 is not no longer possible. This is a 9. And there must be a 9 in one of these two cells. Okay. Um, this 6 now, where, where can a 6 go in this block? Uh, let's think about this. This could be a 6. Or this could be a six. Ah, ah, ha, 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 but this cannot be a six. Can you see why? If this is a six, we can't put a six in this block. Because there won't be a six down here, so we'll need to put a six along, along the midpoint of this thermometer. And look, the maximum value of this thermometer is a five or a six. So this is not a six, which means this is a six. And now, the same, oh yes, the same logic, this is, a, this is very clever, this is very clever. Where can a 6 go in this 3x3 three three block? Now in theory it can go here or here, but exactly the same reason we didn't put a 6 here, we cannot have a 6 here because that's going to shift the 6 over into the midpoint of this thermometer. So this is not a 6, which means this is a 6, and that is probably going to be enormous in terms of solving the puzzle. Now why do I say that? Well, let's have a look, because once we get this 6, this is a 5 now. And once this 5 is in, in we now know this must go 4, 3, 2, 1. And the moment I do that, I come over to this cell, this now must be a 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. So this is a big breakthrough in terms of solving the puzzle. Um, you can see simple Sudoku rules with threes now. I mean, this square is a three. Um, and really now it's just going to be a case, I think, or hopefully, of just, um, I'm trying to see something quick as a quick way to do it, but I'm hoping that really will break the puzzle open. Um, well, let's have a look at column 7. We need to place 1 and 8 in the open positions, and there's a 1 here. So that's a 1, and that's an 8. And so there's a 1 in one of those two positions. We still need to put an 8. Ah, we need to put a 4 in here as well. So the 4 can only go in this position or this position. 
is of this four. And that's annoying. I can seem to be able to put a four anywhere along there. So I don't think we can quite resolve that. Sixes. Sixes. Ah, yes, yeah, sixes. Six, six. Where can a six go over here? We can never put it there in terms of the thermometer. So that's a six. And now this is a six. Just again, straightforward Sudoku rule. Six, six. This must be a six now. And I think we finished all the sixes. It looks like we we have. This has got to be a five. Ah, eight. Yeah, sorry. Eight must go here in this block. Eight, four, like that. Which means this is a five. That resolves that this is a two. And now this must be three, four, five along its thermometer. So I think we've now done the thermometers. And that's always an important point in these thermometer puzzles. And um, because now we know the rest of it must just be straight Sudoku. So in theory, there should be nothing else um, you know, terribly difficult or unusual. Two, three, five, like that. Uh, one, five into the middle, which must go this way round because of the five at the bottom there. We still need an eight. Eight, nine, like this. Let's complete this column, which is going to need a nine. Can we resolve these one threes yet? No. And let's have a look down here. So we need one, five, and nine. So that resolves this. The fives must be in one of these positions. The ones I'll just pencil mark in. As I say, I think we're on the home straight now, so I don't want to take too much longer in terms of finishing this off. You can see this cell is now a naked single because of the one and the two that we have in row nine. We need a one, two, and three down column nine. So this cell must be a three, which resolves the one and the three around the edge. This must be a two, assuming I'm not making mistakes, which I could well be if I'm sort of going a bit faster. Um, as I say, I just want to make sure that we, we finish this off now. Um, so one, two, and six into these squares, it means we can pencil mark twos there. Two, six. Ah, this five, look, that means this is a one, which means this is a nine, which means this is a five. This can't be a one anymore. Two and six. That, this square here should be a two or a six, and you can see up there is the six that we're going to need. So two, six here, one, two, like that, two, four, four here. Uh, we need one and nine into these two squares, which must go that way around. That resolves the nine and the eight. And hopefully with an eight here, and I can click on check for repeats, and there we go. So that is how to do thermo Sudoku. This, I have to say, is a brilliant, brilliant example of the genre from Tom. So thanks for that, Tom. Thanks for um, suggesting that we took a look at the 2018 UK Sudoku Championship. I will put a link in the um, description of the video in case you want to try some of the other puzzles um, from, uh, from this test, uh, or even just print it out and have a go yourselves. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.